All right. Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. As always, we're going to do a broad market outlook. Then we'll go to some number ideas and we'll take it from there. So getting right into it, again, some of the stronger sectors this past week. Healthcare has been very strong as it's bounced. You know, we had that major shakeout a few weeks ago, and now we're working towards that next major resistance level where, for the most part, it seems like most of these major sectors are just kind of in forming these new bases, these very new kind of wide ranges, like here at healthcare is a you know, 30 point range. Utility is extremely strong, uh, you know, within almost a chip shot of the 52 week highs that this is again now this new range, kind of dead smack in the middle, but very strong snap back off those lows, which was, you know, very surprising to see. And even the biotechs, which have been, you know, biotechs and telecom we've been talking about for the entire year, have been in this very big breakdown stage. The biotechs are finally starting to you know, come out of last place while telecom is still pretty smoked. And we can see this new base that's starting to form. So again, with those the four stages, very clear breakdown stage, we're starting to see that sideways action in a lot of the major sectors. And that's kind of my thought process going forward that the, the pain in the short term is kind of over um, for this year. I think that, you know, of course we can still push to new lows. You know, you know, we can easily still shake out 360, you know, with no problem. But I think for the most part, a lot of the selling is kind of run its course. And now it's time for a lot of these sectors to start basing. And then eventually, you know, by end of year, 2023, we're you know, kind of back at highs again. Time. So again, a lot of these sectors, you know, we can see, you know, Dow 30, very obvious breakdown stage. But now, do we start to shift into this, you know, 10% range between the you know, 300 and 330? That seems to be kind of the overall thing with a lot of these sectors. Same thing with the mid caps. Again, this is like a 10% range here, maybe a little less than 10%, but very clear breakdown. And is this the start of the new phase? And we were seeing this with industrials. See this in NASDAQ in two, 2000 point range, you know, another 10% range in that. Uh, consumer discretionary is not that much yet of a base, but you know, we kind of still see the 260 versus 220 area. You know, we kind of touch on the SPY for now, it's this 360 versus 400. And eventually, through that 400, would be the spot we want to add to and be a little more risk on. And then knowing that 360 is kind of the, the real out for now. And again, a lot of these sectors, and same thing we'll wrap up with um, consumer staples, same thing, very big base, shook out those lows. Again, we can push these highs a little bit, but we want to be buying up off of support, selling into resistance. And that's what we need to do kind of in a range bound or basing market is we have to kind of buy when things look crappy, you know, buy up on the way, you know, buy back on the way up after it comes into support or shakes out. And then when everything looks amazing and looks perfect at resistance, when we want to take profits, when it looks like the best buy in the world. Now, the reasons why I think that we're starting to shift into more of these bases, again, the big focus has been on the 10 year. This year, it's, it's increased 170%. This year, traded very similar to the energy sector. Again, amazing run up this year, about 170%, but you know, significant and you know, nearly 100% increase this year. And now it's starting to fade this move. And we're probably going to be starting to kind of H over the, you know, H over the support area in time. And the 10 year just looks very similar chart wise. Again, one's energy and one's you know, interest rates on the 10 year, but chart wise, very similar. And would somewhat expect similar action here, with this, especially for how high and how fast this run up has happened this year. And again, just as fast as they come up, just as fast as they come down. And the more the 10 year comes down, the lower interest rates come with time, the better is the economy, the better is the stock market. So we, we want to see this pull back. And if we look at, you know, even like a monthly, you know, this does not look like, you know, continuation. This looks like a topping pattern. It looks like this, you know, this major resistance. It's a little blow off top. And now it's going to start kind of rolling over and that'll be good for us. And again, if we can you know, uh, ever see interest rates, the 10 year this low again, but we get back into the you know high you know mid twos high ones, you know the stock market should get a nice nice little bump from that. And again, some of the weaker sectors again, just some you know materials is just a massive avoid. Again, huge topping pattern here and could have been a flag broke to the downside. You know we can expect that little bounce to retest what now will be resistance, which was support. 
But materials, we just want to avoid until they have that measure move this breakdown. There's really no reason to try to rush into this sector at all. Just stay away from it at all costs. And even energy it had the easy trade. This is the tough trade. You know, I wish Django was on here. Just avoid Oxy. You can't trade this name every day. Um, again, once it starts smoking this 54 area, it rolls over. It's back in the 40s, and it's just not worth giving back all the easy money that was made here, jerking around with it on the way down and, and losing 500 bucks and 1,000 bucks and end of the year. You're flat on the name when you were up so much going into this one to 70. Um, and then lastly, again, telecom, you know, the, you know, I don't know why the sector is going to beat up so much, but very clear breakdown stage has more than retraced, more than 50% of this move. And this is kind of one of the camps that's probably going to retest the pandemic lows and be probably one of the first sectors to do so. And that, you know, there's always going to be a loser for now, you know, avoid the telecom, avoid the Verizons, avoid the T-Mobiles. Um, avoid the AT&Ts, which again, really aren't names that we trade, but that's actually what we just want to avoid. Top ideas, you know, Heaven's BMY still setting up uh, this little kind of like, it's more, in that, now it's more of like a sneaky buyback through that 78 area. The CHRW, little support buyback here. Again, this is kind of with that theme of these major sectors and markets being in a range bound market or a basin market. That now we want to look to you know, look for these setups where we can buy up off of support, and then we can look to sell into resistance when it looks amazing. So again, 112 will look phenomenal. The next time it gets up there, but if we're still in this base, this range on market, we want to be risking three percent, making five, six, seven, eight percent, selling when it looks amazing, and then on to the next thing. Lessons learned. I forget which member had these ideas from last week, and we spoke about how these were just. You know, could not be more of a void because we hate these cheap stocks. And exactly what we said was going to happen is exactly what happened. Exactly, like on the on the money, like could the, not, came down to that support. Could not <laughs> literally tick that level that the person wanted to buy and ran right to the outs. And right. all were like ten percent plus losses. This MOD buying eleven thirty goes to ten thirty. Ten percent loss, twenty cents in your favor. Why we hate these cheap names. HRT, want to buy 16, goes 20 cents in your favor, drops $2. Horrible, you know, hard. Why we just hate these cheap names. Could not, you know, and it, it's almost good that they failed this perfectly because all three, three for three, same thing. All of this, you know, PLEB, you know, went a little bit, went above, but still dropped $2 from the face. So these were three 10% plus trades that you, you could have done anything you wanted in, say, Apple, for example. Like you're never going to go into Apple saying, well, I risk 10%, but I'd rather see you risk 10% in Apple than risking 10% in these like nothing names. And this is again, why we hate these Happy Meal stocks. I call them Happy Meal stocks. They're just very cheap, not worth the risk reward. You know, this is $1 reward for $10 risk. It's just, these are just, you know, very good lesson learned why we avoid as much as we can these sub $30 names because the risk reward very rarely is there unless you're absolutely perfect you know buying 16 versus 15 and holding a 22 it's like that's a, you know it's hard to expect to do that every time you're getting anything. so that was a good lesson learned I, again i don't remember the member who mentioned it but hopefully they, they watch this little part and they, they realize why we hate these cheap names um so that's that again winners from last week you know the geo continues uh uthr i think this was Kush's idea still looking great he's still in it um, EL was one of Abby's. Also, Humana was one of Abby's calls. That's you know, again still looks phenomenal. Uh, so that's that's kind of it on my end. Heaven, if you have any ideas, remember ideas. We could definitely go over those now. Yeah, and just kind of going over those uh, those lessons learned from last week. It goes to show you that like you really want to be looking to buy off of support. Obviously, forget these just because they're cheap, but just in general, um, you can see that when it's getting too resistant, you really don't want to be buying that green line. You want to be buying off the red line. Um, and that's kind of for even the bigger stocks as well as what I've noticed is that's kind of what works better because there's not a ton of follow through on the resistance breakouts. So you'll get more follow through kind of buying off support, selling into resistance. Um, as for some names, um, I saw a couple setups, but I don't think they're too ready yet. I was looking at, at this ABBV. So this one's 
sort of setting up under this 156 level. Obviously, right now it's a very insignificant flag after a monster move off of uh, that support area in uh, 140. I'd love to see this kind of consolidate over the next couple of weeks. Maybe that earnings can give it a nice boost. You know, if it could go sideways until earnings and then give us a good report of numbers, then we might see that that push up higher. Um, or I, I could also look to place the downside if we see some weakness coming into the week here, uh, just because it's kind of like a double topping pattern between that high of 156 uh, in, what was that, early May or mid-May and then last week. So could see either or. Um, another one, obviously I'm still following this ACHC from, yeah, if you want to type that up, ACHC. ACC is in cat. No, A C H C. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. Um, so this one had a monster move on Friday. So that's kind of why I'm keeping an eye on it because this one really had a lot of relative strength. I was watching this little flag form last week, kind of shook out that small support level and then monster move on fairly like above average volume, but kind of low volume. But keeping an eye on this one for, for a little momentum flag. Um, what else do I have here? Uh, this. DAL kind of fell out of the flag. Duolingo still on my on my watch list. Um, still putting in those higher lows. If you look at Duolingo, right, we, we marked that higher low last week and um, or two weeks ago, and now last week put in another one. So just continuing to put these higher lows, tightening up this range. Um, once it gets to you know two three percent risk, it could be a, a nice opportunity to to at least start a position. Um, Another one I'm looking at is this NBIX, Neurocrime Bioscience. Um, pretty nice macro setup if you zoom out, kind of at a massive descending trend level and flagging up here. Again, kind of putting in higher lows since, uh, since May. Watching this one consolidate, I think through 100 could be a, a, a setup there. Um, and what else do I have? PRVA, Privia, another healthcare uh, name, flagging as well. Probably not completely ready here, but through that 30 area in time, I think looks pretty good. And uh, that's all I got here. Abby's got a couple right now. She's typing them up. We got a uh, COO through 321. All right, so by default, I'm going to immediately just say, it's a buy because Abby's been just shooting threes from the half court line the past two weeks. Uh, that place, you said 321? Yeah, through, uh, through 321. 321, 325, definitely makes sense. Definitely very tight risk. And that's the more important part that yeah. $200, a $300 name and, and it's, you know, risking you know, two, 3%. So definitely, definitely worth the shot for sure. And Something was like a prior breakout area already kind of shook out this. I think the most important part, I think with this is that is right here is that it shook out this low and this looked absolutely horrible. This is a big age pattern shook out that low and you would expect a dramatic breakdown from here. Kind of what we should expect in materials is mm -hmm. that and it just didn't get it. You know, the buyers just immediately stepped back in. And now if again, again, on the way up, she wants to buy up to 321, up to 325, and you get a bounce to this 350, 360 area. It's a very realistic move in the short term, even up to maybe kind of 370 and on tight risk, you know, definitely, definitely makes sense. More makes sense because it had this horrible pattern, broke down and immediately snapped back. It didn't have that like hard selling down to that low. So that's, that's why I like it much more so because of, of this part. Yeah, it had that expectation breaker of, of going further down, probably caught a couple of people with their pants down. And then I, I think Abby's been crushing it when it comes to finding tight risk opportunities. You know, even though maybe the probability isn't massive on this overall descending, you know, it's been in, in a downtrend, it's below the, the key moving averages, those sort of things. But the, even if the probability is low, at least the risk is very low. So if it does work, you get a nice risk reward. If it doesn't, it's a small loss. You can move on to the next uh, and uh, keep it going. Yeah, I agree. Next one she's looking at is MCK. I actually had this one on my watch. I just forget to, forgot to mention this one. M M MCK is in, uh, yeah, there you go. MCK um, through 
333 long. I would just call it 340 to be honest. I think like that's kind of the level that it needs to go. I was actually going over this one with one of our members, David, in uh, step four, he had posted this one. And I mentioned like, cause you have to think about it this way. Like, yes, it is forming a flag over the last couple of days. Um, but you have to think about the big move that it made off of support already. So the strength, it's probably starting to lose a little bit of steam. You can see the volume starts to slow down a little bit. If you're buying, because he was looking to buy basically this little 330 resistance with a stop at 320. So you're risking 10 bucks, but the problem is you have that 340 resistance up there. So at the end of the day, you're kind of, there's a high probability that it's going to set like find resistance at that 340 again. So really your, your reward is 10 bucks and your risk is 10 bucks. That's a one, one trade um, in the grand scheme of things. And then, you know, medium or, or to good, scenario is it consolidates at 340 and then goes higher, um, which obviously could definitely happen. But I think uh, if you're looking to buy 333, I'd probably just wait till 340 and get that, that flag. Um, or if you were buying 330, let's say today, I would go really light, like as a feeler and then look to add in time. Yeah, that's, that's even like, and I've just had really good calls in, it, in this Humana. And this is like that perfect example where it's, you know, mm -hmm. this was back in April. And so, so the point is like to be in this name safe from April until now, it's like, if you're still in it now and it's now July, you want to sell 480 today or, to, or you know, tomorrow. Like you're not really like pumped now. Like, oh, I can't wait to add more because you've been in it for months. Like, you're just like tired of the name. Well, like technically it's like, you should want to be buying 480 because it's like the macro breakout. And that's the same thing with that MCK. It's like, you know, just wait for that macro breakout versus getting like work, getting exhausted in the middle, like fighting with it in here. You know, it's probably easiest to, to wait until it's like really ready to go. And then you can come into it, not trying to get out of it immediately. Cause that again, yeah. you'll probably still, you know, when it does break 40, you know, it's been setting up for more than a year now. It's going to be probably a three, six, eight month breakout that it's not going to be like a day two thing you want to sell. And that's the part where it's like, then you're in this name for almost six or eight months. And, and that's when it's hard to sit with those names, especially through these drops. Like you just try to find those reasons to get out of it. So, yeah. Next one she's got is PSA 318.25. Yep, I just sent public storage. Storage. What was it? What was it? The whole 318.25. So I guess like just the top of this little. Yeah. Just probably buying it versus this 308. Mm -hmm. Where earnings are next month. So you got some time. I see, I mean, I see what this thing's got so killed right here. But definitely again, her big theme lately has been these very tight risk trades. Near support, again, when they're near support, they've been beaten up, they look crappy. It's hard to have a lot of confidence in the name. Compared to say buying the, the stock here, you have a ton of confidence. Where here, you, know, you don't have it because the name has gotten beaten up. But again, a lot of things that she's she looking at that overall theme, which is tight risk here. You know, 318, maybe she gets a move to this 340, 360 versus 310. You know, definitely worth those shots because sometimes they work and it's like, a, you know, we, we wouldn't expect utilities to get absolutely destroyed. And then they're, you know, a week later, two weeks later, they're back within the same range of where they were. And that could be another, this could be another good example of that. Well, like it looks so beaten up. When you have a lot of these candles like this, when things do get good, sometimes you get a little lucky and they don't run up as quickly as they, they drop, but you can still get these like candle moves in that same area on the way back up. Yeah. So again, lots of those charts are like, you, you can almost see like a mirror, like when that, as fast as that breakdown is, on the way back up, you kind of get the, that same kind of, you know, emotion on the way up as well. So definitely want to keep an eye. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Kusha, he's also looking at MBIX. We went over that one. And then he's got A A L K X. A L K X. S A L K S. Yeah. Names, a lot of healthcare names. Yeah. He's looking, uh, watching as it works under that 30, 60 pivot area. That's a pretty nice flag. I like this one. Yeah, dollar risk. Looks like it's 
looks like it's gapping down to uh, 26 right now. I don't know if that's true or not, but my trading view says it's got a, it's gapping down to like support. Um, yeah, it's probably the same. Right. Um, yeah, it might just be a misprint. We'll see at the open. But yeah, so I mean that again, dollar risk, thirty dollar name at thirty two. Is this reason? Yeah, looks good. Yeah, looks pretty solid. And looks like that's pretty much all I got here. Unless anyone in the chat has anything they want to post right now, I'll give it a second. Um, I got some good questions for Q and A later. We're gonna go over the fifteen minute rule uh, on a specific stock that we were looking at last week and how the best way to, to play it was. Um, but it looks like everyone is good for now. They're ready to go for the week. And uh, yeah. A couple householding items. Again, watches are in production. Watch case, they're all being made. We'll have those hopefully, I would say by like September, for all the guys that pre order guys and girls that pre order them. Um, for this week, I'll be going away on Thursday. I'll be in Italy until next week. So there will be no pre-market call next Monday. There will be no chart talk. There will be no big picture. It'll be the first time I have not earned a big picture in probably three years. But I'm gonna go in Italy and have a little bit of fun. When in Rome. Yeah, well, literally. <laughs> um, so just you guys be aware of that for next week. But then once I'm back, you know, back to business as usual. And um, that's that. All right. We'll see you guys at 12. All right, guys. Later.